Hey, this is Parker Madness. Uh, I'm Matt. That's Ben. That's Aaron over hey, there. Hey. Uh, and we have a special guest. A special guest. Hey, guys. All the way from Missouri. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? Good. You do you like, a like having you around. Sports like announcer voice for him. Misery, misery, misery. Did we say misery. his name? He's Ty. He's Ty. He's Ty. Ty. He's Ty. Ty. And we tie it all together. Whoa. Whoa. A boomerang. Sorry, there's a glaive in here. A glaive. Flying around somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> serious callback. <Yeah. laughs> uh. um, so, uh, before we get that into took the- took 15 minutes to prepare, <laughs> and I got it. Before we get into the movie that we're going to review this week, uh, we've got a whole bunch of updates because last week we did like four releases that were all around our the various games that were all culminating in the Oscars uh, awards on Which Sunday. meant no awards for the winners. What? I won the pool and I get yeah. nothing. <laughs> so one of the <laughs> one of the games, you're gonna get something. I promise. I have oh, I've al- already got it, and it's already way up my butt. <laughs> I have a I have a funny idea for that. But no. So at the start of last year, we we all like eight of us drafted movie teams, and they all got points based off of all, all, like an elaborate scoring system over the course of the year, and then it culminates in the Oscars where you get a whole bunch of points. And it was down to Aaron and Wesley at the last second, and <laughs> Aaron ended up winning, even okay, though he, as if we didn't know he had two <laughs> movies that didn't even come out last year. I had a supremely good spread. Thank I you. I tell you what, he would have really pulled away if Sonic would have came out. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I That's needed right. Sonic to actually make it a real win. That'll be coming up. But so the, your two big movies were Joker was the best, is the oh. highest rated in the whole thing in our game, and then 1917, which we're going to yes. review tonight. Oh. Um, two other quick things. So uh, we, as part of the Oscars, we we five of us, so Aaron, Ben, myself, uh, Colin, and Wesley, uh, did our p- like aggregate picks for the Oscars. We competed against the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. Last year, we lost, and we had to watch Inner Space. This year... Which we loved. We, oh, we I won. Love I forgot what that was. <laughs> This year we won uh, fourteen to twelve. I, I thought it was I, eleven. I miscounted. I miscounted, uh, which they called me out on. But we still won. So we ended up. We were going to pick Vampire's Kiss for them to watch, which would have been fun. We got some pushback that that would not be suitable. Oh, <laughs> not be suitable for their audience. So I was not aware that there would there could be stipulations <laughs> about the the punishment given. So we arrived at Lawrence of Arabia, which. On the surface, doesn't sound yeah, like, like much yeah. of a punishment, but it's a long oh, movie. Oh, trust me, it's, it's a long movie. It's a long so movie. it's, it's long almost as long as Care Bears in Wonderland. It's, yeah, it's the opposite of um, today's movies. It's not a franchise. It's mm-hmm. not a comic book movie. Mm-hmm. It's Lawrence of Arabia. It's Lawrence of Arabia. That's right. They're uh, gonna be stuck in the desert watching that. <laughs> I I kind of want to watch it now. I, I want to. It is a good show. movie. So, it's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see we how they Dr. Shivago. That's what we should have uh, done. That, that would have been good. Yeah. That would have been good. Next year. Because uh, we're going to have to go for the, the rubber match next yeah, year. Yeah, when we, when we win again. And the last... Don't forget the pack and rubbers. <clears throat> last update, and Ty, I promise this is the last one, is Final. the Grouch. Which I didn't This is win. our award that Colin made this. And of course, uh, so we've now done this three years in a row where our our individual Oscar picks and whoever gets the most right gets their name carved on here. Colin has won two years in a row. Last year, Ben and I tied with him, uh, and he won again. Who's surprised? (laughs) I am. I was really mad. I predicted Parasite to win all the things it did. I just... Which was kind of a risky thing, but then I got all the other ones wrong. I mean, who could have seen it coming? The guy who made the trophy keeps winning it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But no, he won- odds? this year it was really close. Like we were all within like one or two of him. Uh, Not me though. I was. Yeah, you were. I was. You were within two. I made several good oh. predictions this time. Wesley was one point behind. I think you two. Or maybe the three of us were even two points behind. Mm-hmm. Like we were all kind of clustered That's pretty good together. for not watching any Oscar <laughs> nominations. I know. For how many I watched, I feel like crap. Well, you see, I won a lot because I uh, support women. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna hang. I'm gonna hang my hat on good the fact that I picked Parasite to win all of the things it won, which was which was uh, kind of unlikely. Hmm. Um, all right. But Colin Colin sent us like he's not gonna be on the show tonight, but he sent us something to uh, uh, yes. to cap off his victory. A video. Uh, button, don't fail me now. Ah! 
kisses. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was loud enough. I, I tried to balance it before the show. <laughs> Kisses. 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 All right. Well, Colin, we'll have to we'll have to get the trophy back to him so he can carve his name on it. What mm. a grouch! Um, but no. So a lot of a lot of stuff uh, happened on Sunday with regards to last year's movies and the Oscars. But we decided because you guys just saw this 1917, 1917. together, right? right? Just mm-hmm. recently. It was or? my second time seeing it. Your oh, yeah. second yeah. time. I saw. Okay. It was my first time. Okay. How, when did you see it, Ty? The first, like, um, kind of opening weekend or like s- either sometime either after? opening weekend or like the week or two after that? Okay. It was very soon after it came out. Okay. What was, so I'll ask you both because, and Aaron, you just saw it for the first time too, right? Yeah, yesterday. So, Ty, just because you uh, saw it, uh, actually, no, I'll start with you guys. Aaron and Ben, how did you, f- what was your like initial impact, like, feel having left the theater for 1917? You go first, Ben. I thought it, uh, one. I was not bored. I was already. It, it kind of had a similar experience that I had when I watched, um, but in a not a, as a crazy way, but in the same in a similar feeling uh, when I watched um, um, Fury Road, Mad Max. Fury oh Road, wow! Yeah, where it's like, like adrenaline. I, it goes in and I'm in. Yeah, the whole it's, it's like a it's 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 not a ride per se. But it's a journey, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and you're there. And mm-hmm. it, a ride takes you. A journey is yeah. something you go on. Yeah. So it's like I I wasn't a passenger. I was along. I was. I was. It was more intimate. Okay. And I and I and I, and I also had the feeling I wanted to watch this again. Aaron, what about you? Um, I, I know I, we're kind of creeping in on maybe our ratings later, but I, I think this is interesting, especially because you saw it twice, Ty. So how did right. you feel right uh, away? My first reaction was, at least it was better than Dunkirk. I, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I, I actually thought it was better than Dunkirk, too. I, di- I didn't hate Dunkirk. I just didn't like it very much. I, I think I like Dunkirk better, but... I, is that so? For the we, same reason, uh, it, it felt uh, very uh, personal, mm. is the word that comes to mind. So Ty, you you've seen it twice. How what has when you first saw when you saw it the first time? How did you feel? And then has it changed the, since the second time? Like, did it sustain the same kind of like impact? Yeah, I mean, the first time I saw it, I was totally blown away. I absolutely loved it. Like from the moment I saw it, I mean, just like the technical side of it, I think it's just like brilliantly put together, and I love the long shots, and I think there's just so many cool practical effects and that kind of thing mm-hmm. and then also just like the story of it and two i'm a huge uh history nerd so the all the world war one stuff was so cool and they did such a good job of like i'm i'm not like an expert historian but like everything to me looked really accurate so mm-hmm. i just love mm-hmm. that about it so um I'm, i i sent this link for some of our live show yeah, Kurt, yeah. Uh, one of our co-workers Corey, says dunkirk was ass <laughs> <laughs> I we could talk we can save it for the end but okay. I, uh, <laughs> uh, Corey you're not welcome anymore. Yes he uh, is. He's <laughs> just he's welcome. I'm just like guy. <laughs> uh, no, so I had a, I had a similar reaction. I thought um, one thing I'm curious if you guys felt the same way is um, obviously the technical side of things is like we can get into it is is a huge take. Like when you talk about being immersed in it, like that's a big part of it. Actually, when I left the theater, I was surprised how much I liked some of the nuances of the story. I know a lot of people. No, say, I know. A, yeah, I mm-hmm. know a lot of people have described 1917 as like it's like a video game, but I don't. No. I don't agree with how that. How is it at like all. a video no, game? No, I, I thought it was a really well constructed narrative. I thought so. That you no, cared they... about these characters, and you, and like even like the the when you spoiler when they. Find the people living, the, the lady that was leaving in under, in their basement, mm-hmm. like all those little things. It was it, it was a really qu- very concise story that was well thought out to tell so much about these characters without mothering you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, for lack of a better word. That works whole, on many levels. Yeah, through the whole process, you know. Hold on, Matt. Did and they it, did they give any points as to how it felt like a video game? Because I don't I don't understand. Well, it, it's kind of interesting, and it may even explain why you know it did, it lost a parasite for best picture. I think there's a, uh, I, I could talk a long time about potentially why that happened, but our best I director. Think, I think a lot of this peop- is a complicated movie. I think a lot of people felt like. 
because there's not a ton of dialogue because they kind of get lost in thinking the the one shot is more gimmicky and cool than it is servicing generally the one story. shot is a gimmick but this is one of the few times where this i thought it was a good idea the story you know what i mean so that's another reason why i thought like this was it reminded me of um fury road there's not much dialogue but a good screenplay is a screenplay it's a visual it's a, it's a visual uh, medium so you don't it's not a play mm -hmm. it's a visual medium so it was a lot of work to write that story and a lot of work to choreograph how to tell this story mm -hmm. with with not the gimmick with the vehicle of this person these people's journeys you know um you know one thing i i uh, saw some of the making of which i didn't even realize and they said logistically there was no way in the, for the majority of the movie to, to put lights up mm -hmm. to light in it they didn't. They didn't light anything, and they got these beautiful, these beautiful Im like the imagery. And I think that helps sell the realism and the feel for it. You mm -hmm. know, how many times like so that Midway movie that came out recently, oh. so overproduced. <laughs> Everything's like really like like glimmery, like the CGI same. The, yeah, the yeah. same thing with the uh, Churchill movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as real. It's more like a. You know, like a a mem like a, like a there, well, it it seems it's, produced. It's, I yeah, mean, it's very it, produced. Yeah, I mean, and there was there's plenty of stuff in this that is set up and core. Yeah, there's so much planning to be done, but it looks very real. Well, this is uh, this the way the shot it yeah. looks real. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's, it's like it's, it, it reminded me of a Kubrick movie where it's uh, there's a lot of thought and planning to it, but there's not perfect lighting. You know, the light. To, to backlight somebody or or to, do the, mm -hmm. to paint it, it's like it's not that kind of movie. But also, it's like I, uh, there's a lot of period pieces where they do overproduce. Well, it. and even some of the spot because even the, even Saving Private Ryan is overproduced. Well, there's these like really long walking shots and the people on the side and they're doing stuff and uh, you know a lot of times you see, <clears throat> especially for something that tight and they're not like in the distance or whatever, people will be like really. Uh, like everybody's got to be doing their thing, and that oh, I'm, so when I, they walk by, I'm gonna like scratch yeah. my ass, and I'm gonna do this thing, and that's my thing. Mm -hmm. This it just I don't know for some reason every moment felt kind of like uh, more authentic, and maybe it's just how they shot it, but I don't know. <laughs> Another thing I don't know how they shot it. Um, I know I was talking to you about it, but maybe Aaron, you probably know more in, know more insight in this, but it seems like they changed lenses. But how? How did they change lenses? All you have to do is have something pass in front of screen. It's true, but like even like in mid shot. So did you guys feel like there was like more depth of field, <clears throat> and there was these wide shots? You know what I mean? Like maybe they had a special lens that could do both. I would doubt it, but I I don't know. Did uh, you guys feel like you were ever caring too much about? Oh, how did they do that? It it, it almost became distracting that you were only focusing on how oh, they, at all. how they were accomplishing it. Because I've heard that a bunch of times that that like some people are like, oh, I, I, I felt myself or I found myself just kind of paying attention to uh, where the cuts could be or where, you know, and they weren't really gripped by the story. So no, I, I was gripped by the story. And I was also like, I even said in the middle of the theater, like, how'd they do that? But it was, it wasn't a cut. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to figure out how the cuts are, are because some of them I could figure out. You mean, yeah, I mean, come on, it's a full big movie. But some like I didn't even think about like how did they do that shot, and then I yeah. found how I found how how they did some of them. But but yeah. what about you? Oh yeah, I the first time I watched, it, I went in like thinking like because I had heard all the uh, you know the hype about how great this movie is technically, and so I was kind of watching for that. But really quickly, and I I got immersed into mm -hmm. it and totally well, for, forgot about it. So all like that. from the war war standpoint, um, I mean, I I'm sure there are other like mission you you know, send the soldiers out on a mission, even like a small group of them. And, you know, they go out and you follow them from point A to B and all those trials and tribulations along the way. Um, was this at, like having, I don't know, from a history standpoint or just comparing even other war movies, do you, because I was thinking a lot about this, do you feel like this did anything? I, I'm setting this up. I'm not like uh, leaning one way or the other, but do you feel like this movie did anything that was unique from other movies or was the way they shot it really the thing that was different go ahead 
I was going to say, I think absolutely. I mean, it does. I think it does a great job of like without spoon feeding it to you, just showing you how, um, like how just insane this war was Mm -hmm. and how technology was so advanced, but at the same time it wasn't Mm -hmm. because this is a story that in modern day couldn't exist because you just call them or you radio them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're sending two guys on this epic journey that they, I mean, it's it's, it's, epic nine mile journey. Right. And they're just trying to do something so simple as to just deliver this message. Like, Hey, don't attack at dawn. And it's Mm -hmm. damn near impossible. The, the thing that I took away that I thought was so, which is why Sam Mendes like was not, I feel like was this close to winning uh, for best director, but he, the direction they took for a war movie of like, it's just so empty everywhere all the time. It reminded me of like, kind of had like little horror elements of people popping out and like, yeah. but it wasn't like hokey or jump, uh, jump scares. overly war movie ish. It was, mm-hmm. it was like, so like, like uneasy and surreal, this world of just emptiness and it, and, but at any moment, you know, like, there's trip like there's not even a human being in front of them, but something's exploding, and like yeah. you don't ever see it, the danger really. And I thought that was a just a, well that to me was the different. We know angle. we know why that works because <clears throat> so that's not just a horror, um, uh, a horror. Um, I can't think of the word trope? horror device. Trope. Mm-hmm. The device is not a trope; it's a device, it's but a device it's trope. also a suspense device. So. Every time they show the monster or whatever you're chasing you in the movie, the f- the, the fear level goes down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But it, but but the whole point when they don't show it, mm-hmm. your imag- like your imagination, it's very rarely and very rarely they, the monster scares you once they show it. You know what I mean? So in, in a good horror movie, you probably never show it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or a good suspense movie, you don't know that fear of the unknown. So you know that they're out there, even like the the bullets hitting, you know, the, the sniper trying to shoot them. Mm-hmm. You know that it's out there, but you don't know where it is, and that's what's scary about mm-hmm. it. And your imagination just thrives on that. Yeah. So a lot of nothing happened, you know, is what makes it scary. And the point of that in this whole thing is to show you how confusing war is. Mm-hmm. You don't know anything at any time. Yeah. Right. Like how, yeah. Yeah. So what I thought was so interesting was that, um, and this was actually my my favorite part about the movie um, <clears throat> was, and it, it's really interesting that Parasite ended up winning for Best Picture with this. I would assume as a close second, uh, because the two the two movies have just like polar opposite <laughs> philosophies about people. Uh, not that 1917 is unique for a war movie, but I feel like what I love so much about it was that, um, you know the horror and carnage and whatever of war and like look how dangerous it is because they and they even set it up with mark strong's character where he's like you know some people uh make sure somebody listens when you give the message and sees you gave it because he, he, some people just want the fight yeah and i thought they were going to set that up for later but then uh obviously this is all spoilers uh when he delivers the message and benedict cumberbatch is like he he does what you think he's gonna not he's gonna just go ahead with the attack, but then he calls it off right away. Yeah, but and he's I still thought frustrated. I him. thought that was the best. That was the most interesting thing that this movie did that was, was the most having war movie thing. Having, having him choice. call it off that despite all of this, people could make, be like rational and like <laughs> yeah. And I it, I was and, 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 flabbergasted that, by but, that they chose to do that. That but also brought you into the it made you felt more real. Well, and, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't over dramatized. <laughs> In terms of like, you have this just for the sake yeah, of this like, not, this is an conflict. apocalypse now. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have mm-hmm. you know Marlon Brando out in the middle of nowhere. You think I'm calling <laughs> off this attack? You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a little assassin? <laughs> Some tin <team crumpets. laughs> yeah. Little car. But yeah, no. So, uh, which you know, have it, any of you guys seen Parasite yet? I have no. No. Uh, like it. It's not surprising, but that whole movie is basically like your circumstances kind of make you uh, allow you to be a better or worse person almost like, or at least that's one thing. This is the, uh, like kind of the opposite. I felt like where regardless of how terrible it is, people are going to try and do good things. And you know, I I don't know if this is a British thing, but it seems like the British soldiers are like for every time they've depicted them in movies and just in general, everything I hear they they have more chivalry 
than most soldiers. <laughs> you know what I mean they, they, they tr- tend to do the right they thing. They try to get the water for that down German soldier? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like they're, they're not as cold. I so my one of my friends when they saw it was like there's that movie was so unrealistic 1917 and that one of the things he called that was like nobody would ever go over to the German soldier of course he's gonna kill you why would you ever do that and like I, I would have you mean but I wouldn't I don't know I would be very hesitant I wouldn't but I understand why they did I mean it's a split second decision I mean a human being is screaming in a yeah. burning aircraft in front of you yeah. I mean the the I mean there's definitely people that would feel the need to, I'm going to pull them from that wreckage. Yeah. yeah. And they were arguing about it. So there's a split section. And like mm-hmm. he, he did the right thing, but he died doing the right, right. thing. Yeah. Uh, I would say he didn't do the right thing, but his heart was in the right place. Yeah. yeah. I had a lot of friends actually complain about that scene, saying it was like it ruined the movie for them. Really? Because they thought it was really stupid how he yeah. died, yeah. which I thought that, that was kind of like the point. Like there's so many pointless deaths yeah. in this war yeah. and in the movie. And that was a catalyst for him, his friend, to... I can't let him die in vain like this. Right. I have to carry this on through. Well, and they did such a good job because it it felt so pointless. But it because of the way they shot it, it's just like 30 seconds later, he's just got to keep walking. He just leaves mm-hmm. him there. And that's, that's war. Like such an in, like a Carry on. I don't think I've ever seen something like no, but that ha- before. How many times we see it cut and then he's in another scene? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, it's like, that's hard storytelling. That's a hard script to write. You yeah. know? So Ty was, and, I, and I both agree, but I think one of our, I have two favorite shots, or sequences and shot, or slash shots. I mean, the whole thing's a shot, you know. But <laughs> but but two favorite sequences, and it, and it was the one when he's coming out of the water, and you hear this is a great sound design and great um, mixing, and also great um, visuals of how they did this whole scene when he hears the singing. Of the the other, uh, oh yeah. There's there a lot of metaphor to it, you know what I mean. But also mm-hmm. just a beautiful way it was done, as he slowly got to it and then it pan and then it pan, pan around him and just sitting there. Boop. How and complicated! He was so tired. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was a beautiful like morning, you know what I mean. And, and it was just a really cool sequence. All it was missing was the text at the bottom, Oscar clip. <laughs> That's the only war movie-ish thing in this whole movie. To me, and so, like, for his little dialogue, again, this is why I think the the video game comparison just doesn't hold up at all. Like, there was the scene kind of at the start where uh, the friend that ended up dying was talking all about, like, the plants or whatever, that Mm -hmm. you have to, like, Mm -hmm. rip them out and get rid of all the bad ones first, and it's really, it's a long, arduous process, but then that allows things to grow. And that just, like, kind of, and then you see just this destruction all around and given the theme of the whole movie and by the time they get there it's like these people in the middle of all of this are just are still singing and stuff and i there was just such a like a heart and integrity to the whole thing that Matt, like are we just the cherry trees well, yeah <laughs> we are we are the cherry trees i don't know i, I like this movie and the a dog lot. Yeah. society <laughs> <laughs> You'll the, always get a, a laugh from me. Or, <laughs> any Adam Sandler <laughs> reference, Billy Madison. Um, or is it Happy Gilmore? That was Billy Madison. Yeah. yeah. So what's nice about this, you don't see a lot of World War One. And no one talks about World War One. No. And like he was saying, it was this war between like this industrial revolution of technology and war weapons that they still had to fight in the trenches. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is this intermix between like the old old way of fighting with new technology. Mm-hmm. Smack right. in the middle. Right. Yeah. Odd time. It was. Odd time. So another shot I loved was very well done, and I think Aaron probably likes this one because... You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know what I like. It was the flare sequence after he gets up out of the church. Like, oh, th- yeah. the way they did oh, the that was stuff. very. Yeah. Cool. That was a good seventh inning stretch for me. Change things up. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That because that was the only cut. The cut was right there, or the obvious cut, and then it went into. I thought about you during this movie because I thought you would love the um, the uh, the honest way they shot shot it. You mean? Uh, in places, I I felt like. Like, early in the movie, because it was outside, I, I felt like the early parts of the movie were a little overlit, but that's sometimes just how it is when it's cloudy outside. Yeah, they didn't light it, though. That's what I mean. I, I, yeah. I had time to come around on that. 
<laughs> they didn't lie. You said overlit. <laughs> yeah, where, where there's not enough, it's not enough contrast. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Like, it's the tendency these days where to not have any shadow anywhere. If you got a shadow, fill it in, you know? I hate that. Yeah. But if it's outside, it's midday, cloudy, it's going to be pretty pretty even lighting. Yeah. I think they used the, 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 the Kubrick technique of any the lighting that they did use was within the source of a prop. You know, with within the environment, you know, like try to make it as practical as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think that's what makes it good. Mm. The lighting, the only light source was that flare at night. You know what I mean? And that's why it was a shallow depth of field when he went to that, the you know, the basement with, yeah. with the fire and stuff. I I just thought that even that little scene was so good because it's just, here's this person and their slice of life that he, they and he, you know it's like little bits of like reality of like. Other things that's naturally how you would inter interface with it, but she just wanted him to stay because she felt even when he walked out and there was a young German so soldier that saw him, he's a human. You know what I mean? It's just like this sucks. This whole situation sucks. You know? They didn't make the Germans bad. It's just it's just the war. Well, yeah, they never really got into why they they never once even taught hinted at like. Why are we here? No one even questioned the exactly. like why Everything we're doing I've ever heard this. About World War One, and everybody's like, "Who who were the good guys again?" Yeah, right. Um, hmm. I was going to ask you because I you guys because I was a little bit I wasn't necessarily confused. I feel like I followed, but the so the scene with the woman and her child, and uh, he's like, "I got to go." And then at the end, we see that he's got uh, family at home too. Mm -hmm. He got a yeah. letter or whatever. Um, is 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 there anything else there or was it literally just i he he basically was the takeaway at the end that like he risked his life for all of this because he knew it was noble even though he had people he was going to return home well cuz he never talked about his family he never talked about returning to it mm -hmm. and you saw the, you thought the whole time that he was just a loner they give you the they, they give you the um impression that he was just on his own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he, but then that was kind of like the real Dan. He yeah. isn't on his own. Okay, yeah. That, you mean, and that was to me that was a character piece strictly for him, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he's it was he was such a nurturing uh, figure when it came to the baby and came to the mm -hmm. that lady, and he was a very chivalrous person. Yeah, you know I mean, he's a very caring person. I mean, like it's crazy, it's so crazy, because Ty was saying there's people like right now living in war zones like that. Mm -hmm. You mean? Oh yeah, yeah. there's it's, it's just like three of well, the documentaries like, this year. No. Yeah, but we don't we don't even think about it. You know, we don't even think about That's it over brutal. here. Yeah. You know, it makes this movie makes you want to research more about uh, uh, the um, the Great War. Maybe it makes you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're right. You're right. So uh, it, when you guys start, because I I started when I was thinking about my number for this movie while we were talking about it, I I had a immediate impact but then i was like this is what i think i would rate this movie then i started to think about well let me think there's a whole bunch of really good war movies there's uh, full metal jacket <laughs> there's <laughs> there's a bunch of them but most I feel, of the movies are vietnam <laughs> i feel yeah i feel or like World this War one II. i feel like this one has a spot um how do you guys feel like with relationship to other kind of war movies i think it's up there for me time will tell yeah because like dunkirk i i haven't thought about it since it came out yeah, me neither. Oh, I enjoyed it, but and I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like it just didn't work for just me. Just another war movie. Mm. It didn't work for me. I think this one, this one felt more intimate. Mm -hmm. Dunkirk felt a little more like there's, a, you know, we're going too many places. You know what I mean? Which is cool, mm. but it was more of an ensemble where I cared about this one person, even though it was technically not an ensemble. Dunkirk. It felt more like an ensemble. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Ty, what do you? What about you? I mean, I'm I'm trying to think about Dunkirk, and I'm hardly remembering yeah. anything. <laughs> I remember it. there was gunfire. Like, I really liked. I remember liking uh, uh, Dunkirk a lot, especially the scenes with the the airplanes. Yeah, I really enjoyed. That. Me too. That, that was my cool. Favorite. So, Bane if I were to if I were to ask you, <laughs> is nineteen seven is nineteen seventeen a top five war movie? Yes. Yes, yes. or no? Top five? Yes. yes. That's yeah. tough. It's but I'm not going to say no. It's tougher than... I don't a know. Lot Pearl Harbor ones. is pretty good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get out of here with that. I hated that one. Is it the best war movie, yes or no? I don't know. I can't say that. No. no. I think... Well, Patton's pretty I good. I mean, just because you're kind of holding up, that's... 
it's in, it's in the top five for you. I mean, come on, you know, like you, the top five always juggles. You know, sure, you, you I know, know everything juggles. There's no yeah, yeah. set things. Um, but I think it's one of the best war movies. Yeah, I feel that way too. I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just. How many war movies have you seen, man? Two. Do we count the hunt for Red October? Dunkirk. <laughs> is, the, Dunkirk. Is, the, is the hunt? Is the hunt for Red the October? Small soldiers. A war <laughs> the Gorgons. <laughs> Very nice. And, and no, that is not a war movie. Maybe not to you, but for I, those I of us who lived it. You're right. War is hell. All quiet on, War the, is heck. All quiet <laughs> on the front yard. What about <laughs> Star Wars? <laughs> what about Star Wars? Great. No. Uh, it's got no, wars in the name. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> what about that one episode of Star Trek? All right. <laughs> any, uh, any, last, any last thoughts before you rate the movie? Uh, I think I mentioned earlier the, the singing shot. That was the one time where I was like, okay... Aaron, you hate music and singing. <laughs> it's not the singing. It's just deliberately an Oscar clip. Don't no, tell, I try to tell me otherwise. No, I think, it, I think it was just a break in the action. I think what it was to me was was a little bit of like, he just needed this rest. You know what I mean? It was, it was like he feels so defeated. He's trying to find this regiment, and that's them. You know what I mean? Which was like it just a... happened to It find was it. kind of a cool little piece, you know? And just... It was just like showing like the, the hardship of the journey. He's like he's on the, like the very last bit. He's about to give up. You know what I mean? He, you know, he just he, I this get is it. it. But oh, there, that's it. You know what I mean? It's it's very it's very a uh, um, mytho- mythological way of storytelling. Yeah, like I, I like get it. like <laughs> Odysseus and stuff. You know, I totally get it. But at the same time, I all it was missing was a for your consideration on the Oscars at the bottom. I. It took it took me out of it. That's all. Mm. I think it brought me in. Yeah, me too. That's the beautiful yeah. thing about people. We're all different. Yep. <laughs> Us with souls like Us things. right, you wrong. <laughs> what did, what did you, so I think a lot of people, and it's the clip that's on right now. I'm just kidding. A lot of people like feel like that was an imp- st- legitimate, even though it was kind of in the trailer, was still in the moment an impressive shot. It yeah. was. Uh, did it have to have the music? Moment. Why not just turn up the sound effects and make it, you know a little more realistic because that was what the movie was doing for so much of the movie. I kind I, I, I you may your, have a point. I see your point with that but the the song the the uh the piece that you don't like was very um atmospheric. And that's what I liked about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. shit, I can't assholes. just say you're wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 if I'm being honest, I can't say you're wrong. Thank you. All right, let's rate the movie. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll go first just because I, I already kind of shared mine from our last week episode. So I gave it a nine out of 10. Ooh, this was God. actually my six, six favorite movie, six highest movie from this year. Uh, I actually put it ahead of Parasite, which. Um, there are five other movies with a higher score than a nine out of 10. Well, they're all nines, but I At or higher, think okay. they are better. Okay. This yeah. died is big. This died a little bigger. This, this is a lowercase nine. <laughs> lowercase. Lower <laughs> <laughs> it is a lowercase nine. That's <laughs> true. Um, for, I, I liked it for all the reasons we talked about, but again. The, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that the jokes I don't think about are the ones that people laugh at? <laughs> the one that broke bad. Uh, yeah, nothing this else gold, to add. Jerry. Uh, gold, Jerry. Gold, Jerry. Ty, what about you? I give it an uppercase nine. Uppercase yeah. nine. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Any any additional kind of reasons, or is it pretty I much just, for man? I I just loved this movie, and I think too, like the second time I watched it, it just like really cemented it. Like all the things I loved about it the mm. first time through were um, I made better by knowing what was going to happen mm-hmm. and kind of being able to look at stuff. And there's just so much detail you pick up in the second pass through that that mm. you don't get in the first. And it's just, it's a great movie. And I, I don't know that I'll see another one that'll have that impact for a while. Yeah. Ben. Hmm. So I get this in nine two, And there's a lot of reasons, like similar reasons what he said. I had the same feels a little bit of how I felt about Blade Runner 2049 with this movie. That it's a movie that I want to see. I want to see these types of movies in the theater. M- something more like this. Where it, I probably didn't make any money. It made a ton of money, it did? I think. Yeah. Wasn't it? Bet Aaron hundreds knows. Of millions? Because, yeah, Aaron does. No, I don't. I don't follow that stuff. Well, I mean, just because you're. It yeah, but was doing but so well for people. It, are yeah. not going to say, let's just do this art piece, and commercially put it in cineplexes. You know what I mean? 
very often. Ah, uh, the cineplexes. <laughs> cineplexes. <laughs> I'm just saying this to me. This is a, this is this is cinema. This is what movies. This is why I love the movies. You know well, what I mean? yeah, there's, these I don't movies know. I didn't come see out. Any Infinity Stones. No, but <laughs> but, they, but even like commercial movies now oh, are not actually? like even even commercial movies aren't like commercial movies don't have to be this one long shot of doing things. Like there's a little bit of TLC in those that they don't do now as much. There's there's individual individuality and uniqueness to movies that we don't see very often. And this has individuality to it. Well, yeah, I think there's plenty of movies like that, but I agree with you. The from a, a big blockbuster, what gets the ad mu- advertising dollars and stuff? That it's a little bit different. I mean, this probably got a ton of advertising. I feel like I saw this commercials a, a whole lot, but this isn't this, this is, is this a, isn't the there will be little blood. Bit, uh, there will be blood. This is a little bit different range of um, movies. Mm. Aaron, what about you? It's tough. I, I'm generally not a war movie fan. <laughs> You'd be um, like. Four. <laughs> no, I'm not you when we're yeah. talking about movies that are actually give, good. He's like, <laughs> I give it a 1917 <laughs> out of 10. Uh, I discarded that joke hours ago, so it shows you. You did? <laughs> Just no. wipe it off my hand. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a piece of paper. Yeah. I don't want your blood money. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I would have to say uh, it's really tough. Like, it was good. I... I I felt like it was a good journey to go on. I I was never bored. I felt connected to the story and characters. For 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 example, Ferdinand. Yes. Uh, Full Metal Jacket is one of my favorite war movies, and that is an eight. I don't. <laughs> I'm just gonna mute you for a minute. Full Metal Jack is an eight. I don't know if I can give this the same rating. I but I'll give it a seven. I give it a seven. It's good. Okay. It's good. It it, it captivated me for for a few minutes. For You're few back minutes. on it. Ben. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry. When you said that, I was thinking of the Full Metal, uh, not Full Metal Jacket. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Full Metal. That that's Kubrick, right? Yes. Um, when they p- put Donald Duck's voice over the yeah. uh, the drill sergeant. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my best <laughs> take, take of that. That's not a word piece. And, and Joker was, and the Joker character was Goofy's voice. Boy, oh, no, is that you, John Wayne? Is this me? It's not a war face. <laughs> For those who haven't seen that, there's a dub of Full Metal Jacket where they put Disney voices on it. You should probably go check it out. It's pretty good. <laughs> so I think this is as good a time as any to say we're going to go on a break for a while. <laughs> we're taking a couple we're weeks hiatus. We're taking a hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need it. My God, age 16 and up. Donald Duck is flying south for the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go uh, basically until for... I think it's two weeks off and right. then back at the first week of March. And it's really kind of, uh, we're restarting a bunch of stuff and we're building a new studio and all this stuff. No, we're rebranding. No. <laughs> no. It'll be our, f- is this our f- fourth sh- year? We're it'll be the start our- of our season, we're in season four. four yeah. This will be the start of wow. our fourth year doing this. So I made it on the season finale. It's a big deal. Yeah. That's awesome. Harsh. <laughs> Hope we don't get canceled yeah, next before time we come back. On Spark of Madness. Yeah. That, that, will Ty survive? <laughs> will he hold out, folks? He? Can he hold out? <laughs> Is he getting paid to hold out? <laughs> All right. We'll Am see I you next month. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Here's your end of the deal. Yeah.